Hey guys, I just wanted to uh, run over this um, power brake system that's offered by Jags. Um, we'll uh, put the descriptor, or the uh, part number, I guess, in the title for it, but um, it's a pretty unique unit. So it runs an electric pump that'll build pressure and then it feeds that to your master cylinder. And basically the whole reason you would get this set up is either you need more clearance for your valve cover or your intake like I have or um, for turbocharged applications where uh, you know turbocharged engine doesn't make vacuum for your brake booster um, you could get a brake uh, vacuum pump as well but uh, in this case I needed room to clear my intake so I needed to delete the booster and this seemed like a great option it's gonna give me good uh, brake performance it builds between uh, 15 to 1800 PSI under normal braking conditions and can output up to uh, 2500 PSI, which is pretty crazy. So um, basically when you buy this thing, it's kind of expensive. Uh, I think it's listed on their site for like about 1400 US. And yeah, this is what you get. You get uh, the pump and there's like a pressure reservoir and then your master cylinder, it's nice and uh, polished polished up for you. Um, you get uh, one rubber brake hose that's like a return hose that goes from this to your master cylinder. And uh, also this comes pre-wired with a little harness that they put together and it's already pre-wired. So you just have three connections that you have to do, which is like a constant battery power right to the battery positive and uh, a ground. And then the third one is an ignition switch power so when you turn the key on uh, it basically turns the pump on now the pump doesn't run all the time there's a pressure sensor that's built into it so what it'll do is when you turn the key on and it sees that the pressure may be a little low it runs the pump until the pressure builds up and then it's it'll shut that pump off once it reaches a desired pressure that uh, it'll just sort of store so it's ready for your brakes whenever uh, you go to hit the brakes and then um, yeah, as you use the brakes, the more pressure you put on the pedal, that pressure sensor is going to pick that up and either run the pump and apply more pressure or relieve pressure. And uh, it's a pretty neat little unit. Uh, it's pretty compact. Comes, like I say, you get the pump. There's a bracket that comes on it as well. And uh, it's sort of just like a generic thing, right? Like it's not for one single application. Uh, sort of uh, customize it and install it yourself so pretty neat um, the uh, I guess this thing the end of it that goes through the firewall to your brake pedal um, assembly it's got like a heim joint on the inside that's threaded for the actual rod that goes into the master cylinder and uh, in my specific application for this Japanese car uh, it, it wasn't so much a bolt going through like the way they had it with the heim joint. Mine was more of a fork that goes over a bar that's attached to the brake pedal. So I had to make my own. I actually just took the original one off of the uh, Toyota brake booster and then modified it to go on to this one. Um, unfortunately, they thread it with Imperial thread. Um, I forget exactly what it was. But uh, this one here, so uh, 3 8 by 24, that's what they thread the rod that comes out of the master cylinder. And uh, yeah, it just it didn't really work out too good for me because the, uh, the Toyota one is metric thread, right? And so is a lot of stuff these days. I don't think you really get many newer vehicles that run Imperial Thread anymore. It's mostly for classic vehicles, right? Which I think that's what the application sort of tailored for. But anyhow, um, so that just gives you a little insight on what you get and sort of how it works. And as far as bleeding it goes, once you get all your lines set up, you can see we've got three ports on the side here. The very front port, that's going to be your rear brakes. Then the next port down that's in the center, that's gonna be your front brakes. And then this port at the back here, that's a hard line. So that's your pressure feed 
from the pump itself, or I guess the pressure reservoir that the pump builds pressure into uh, to the master. This is like a sealed unit here. I'm just gonna take the cover off to show you what's inside. It's sort of divided up into uh, two separate chambers and then um, the front half of it is kind of divvied up into two pieces, but it's not fully blocked off from one, one another. Uh, there's the uh, cover here. You can see this gasket. I'm actually uh, gonna see if I can get a hold of them about maybe getting a spare gasket because this isn't something that you can just go to the store and be like hey I need a gasket for this because I'm sure it's a one-off thing and the most annoying thing I would say about this is that this gasket doesn't really want to stay put so you kind of have to like squish it into the groove and then be quick about it otherwise the gasket falls off and then you can pinch it so one kind of annoying thing but whatever it's a minor inconvenience so you can see these two uh, separate areas here like i say rear brakes front brakes and then this is like your pressurized area um and uh, you got the return line that's down there now uh, as far as bleeding this thing goes all i did um, was fill it up full of fluid and then i started with the front brakes and i did one caliper at a time where i would just use my vacuum bleeder and uh, i would pull fluid through this the system that way just using the vacuum bleeder until the fluid was constantly coming out and I would keep that topped up and then I'd go do the other wheel and then I did the back ones and then um, once the fluid was up and I knew that I had most of the air out I then uh, bled this here so this uh, pressurized reservoir it has a bleeder screw as well and obviously like we got to get the air out of there and fill it up with hydraulic fluid uh, brake fluid uh, by the way, it does run either DOT3 or DOT4. I chose DOT3 just because it's cheaper on fluid and I'm really not going to see any performance benefit about running DOT4. But um, uh, when you want to bleed this thing, basically you just have to turn the key on, which is going to start the pump and the pump's going to build pressure. And then you just open the bleeder screw. You can see I've got a clear line attached to that bleeder screw so that I can watch for air bubbles coming out. And it also contains the mess of brake fluid spraying all over the place. We don't want to do that. So um, you just let the pump run. And because you have that bleeder screw open, it's not going to be able to build pressure. So it's going to run the pump all the time. And uh, you just watch until your air bubbles go away. But keep in mind, the, uh, the fluid level is going to be going down. So as, as long as the pump's running this and you're bleeding it, this fluid level is dropping down more and more and more. So you can only run it for a short amount of time. I would say you wouldn't want to run it for any more than 10 seconds. It'll drain the reservoir that quickly. And then, um, yeah, you basically take your cap back off. And I believe this is, this obviously must be a pressurized unit. And so I believe the, the seal like you're gonna have to put the cap back on and screw it back down tight before you do the bleed procedure otherwise i'm assuming that this thing is probably going to if you were to hit the brake pedal it's going to send pressurized fluid through this line into here and it'll probably make a mess all over the place so uh definitely recommend wearing safety glasses they say in the instructions that this high pressurized line that goes from the master to the reservoir is supposed to be a um, like a braided stainless steel crimped fittings on either end um, hydraulic line that's rated for at least 3,000 psi so I just did a hard line with flares and I'm sure that's more than suitable I mean you have to think about the brake lines that actually go to the brakes say you're in an emergency situation you hammer on the brakes those lines are gonna be um, subject to that high pressure too, right? So hard line's probably fine. Just don't want you running like some rubber line or something like that, don't do that. But um, uh, yeah, once you get a bled and you go through and do it a couple times, I'm gonna just like crack these bleeders down here as well uh, in a bit. Basically just have uh, somebody sitting in the car and they just have to put their foot on the brake pedal, which will turn the motor on and will cause brake pressure to build in the brakes, applying the brakes. And just like how you would normally bleed brakes with somebody 
pumping up the pedal and then holding the pedal down. This, you don't have to pump the pedal because the motor does all the work for you. So you just hold the brake pedal down, crack the bleeder a little bit, brake fluid's gonna come out, close the bleeder, the uh, person can let their foot off the brake, and then obviously the big thing here is to just constantly check the brake fluid level in the master. Um, kind of sucks that there's no uh, sight glass or anything like that to know how much fluid's in there. You have to take the cap off every time, which is a little bit annoying, but it's really a minor inconvenience. So, um, I live in Canada and from the time I ordered this piece to the time I got it was about 10 days. And uh, that was sort of in the, around the, the Christmas season holidays. So pretty quick shipping, I would say. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. If uh, you have any questions, throw them in the comment section below. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions you might have. And um, yeah, if, you, if you're running this system and have any tips or advice, throw them in the comments as well. Give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more content and we'll see you in the next one. All right, so this is the instruction that uh, you'll find online. It's downloadable in a PDF. Basically just gives you uh, an overview of sort of how to install it as far as the wiring goes. Uh, one thing they sort of mess up is they say that uh, your signal wire, which is your ignition switched power source that turns the motor on when you turn the key on, they say it's a tan wire, but it's not, it's a, it's a red wire. And the main power wire that goes to battery positive, um, constant battery, battery positive is also a red wire, but it's a big one with a 40 amp fuse in line with it. So. Uh, my main power wire is just running, uh, it actually runs down over to the starter underneath of there, but the starter gets a direct battery feed, which is that big red wire right there that you see. So it's the same thing, only different. The starter's down in here, but uh, you basically, all you gotta do is just run it straight to battery positive, and they've already put a fuse in there for you, so it's safety protected with a 40 amp fuse in case of a short. Uh, you wouldn't want to start a fire or melt anything. Um, and then that smaller red wire that they say is a tan wire. Um, I just ran that one. Uh, it's right here. I've wrapped it all up pretty and I uh, actually installed a connector to make it easy in case I need to remove this. I don't have to cut any wires. I didn't want to hardwire it. So that just runs uh, into this harness, which uh, fed something else. Oh, it was a... Uh, the electrical out of this car came out of a uh, Lexus at auto leveling headlamps and no longer going to be using that. So I just utilized an existing circuit that uh, just had an ignition switched uh, 12 volts on with the key on and that's going to work great. The uh, master cylinder itself, when you fill it up, it says not to fill it any more than a quarter inch from the top. And I'm sure based on this lid here, noticed that there was this little uh, rubber thing in here and I'm sure that's for pressure in order for a bit of pressure to expand so that it's not you know if it were to overpressure somehow it doesn't explode it has somewhere to uh, compress that air that's inside of there right so it can't be completely full of fluid you need some air in there and uh, one last thing was the uh, your brake pedal ratio so I was trying to find the uh, instruction sheet that I got with the kit, but I may have thrown it out. But uh, yeah, basically where the pivot point is for your brake arm um, and the master cylinder hooks on to that. So when you push your brakes, it applies the rod and the master cylinder. Well, there's a certain ratio that you need to have and that's basically just where uh, your master cylinder linkage is in accordance to the pivot point and I believe if I remember correctly it said that it needs to be um, three to one so it's like yeah three inches down and um, mine is a little bit more than that but should be fine and I think just if you have it too far down you've got too much leverage and you could possibly damage the master cylinder that's my guess. I don't know, but um, yeah, I just wanted to cover those points. All right, here's the, pe the uh, pedal ratio uh, example here on how to calculate it. 
you can see there's our pivot point and then three inches down that's where our push rod would secure so if the linkage is a total of 12 inches long you've got a four to one power ratio um, and you can see with some uh, depending on where you've got that pivot point you can bump that ratio up for um, more of like a manual manual brakes feeling because you don't have as much leverage the closer you move the uh, rod to the pivot point you're losing leverage so the further away you move it the more leverage you get so they're just saying ideally you want it to be about three inches away from your pivot point and uh, like i said the, this pedal in this toyota is about four inches no no yeah so you want it four inches because so, you want to be a three to one right right so you want it four inches on a 12 inch uh pedal length because that's three to one because that's four to one having a, a three inch right 12 divided by three is four so you want 12 divided by four which is three right so you want to you want the push rod four inches down from the pivot on a 12 inch pedal i can't remember exactly what the spec was for that but it's about that you wouldn't want to go more than that otherwise you could maybe damage something and you don't want to go any less than that because you're just not going to get the performance that you should be getting so but uh, i'm sure if you need to calculate that you still don't understand there's probably videos on how to do it so it might be three to one might be four to one might be five to one I don't know who knows the uh i know they gave me a piece of paper in the package but uh for the life of me i can't find it anywhere on their website so it's kind of silly but 